It is an inherited metabolic disease that is both debilitating and progressive, leading to significant morbidity and early mortality. Now, currently, there are no approved treatment options. Symptoms typically begin in childhood and include lower limb spasticity, which is tight or stiff muscles, intellectual disability, and or seizures. Now, we're going to be learning more from renowned expert Dr. Steven Cedarbaum. But first, let's meet Angela, whose four-year-old son, Isaiah, is living with this disease. We're going behind the mystery of Arginase 1 deficiency. Isaiah was diagnosed with Arginase 1 deficiency through a newborn screening. I went and met with the team of doctors and they explained that my son had something called urea cycle disorder, which was a metabolic condition. There was just a lot of things going through my mind. How is this happening or what is there to expect. When your child is uh, diagnosed with a rare disease, it's really difficult to um, understand and accept because you just don't know what's to come. Clinical geneticist Dr. Steven Cedarbaum has studied and treated patients with Arginase 1 deficiency for nearly 50 years. The Balancing Act spoke with him from his home in Los Angeles. Arginase 1 deficiency is an inherited disorder due to abnormalities in the Arginase 1 gene, which results in the failure of the body to break down arginine, which causes its accumulation and a clinical condition. Arginase deficiency can cause spasticity, mobility difficulties, intellectual deterioration and seizures. So the most frustrating part about everything um, during the appointment was all I was given was a pamphlet with information that I could research on and a list of foods that my child could and could not have. So I was left to do a lot of research on my own. I was able to find a couple of patient organizations, including some um, Facebook groups also that had information on Arginase 1 deficiency. I started understanding a whole lot more than all the information the doctors were giving me. Signs and symptoms typically appear at the age of two, but there can be lengthy delays in diagnosis. Misdiagnoses may include cerebral palsy or hereditary spastic paraplegia. This can lead to disease progression and worsening of clinical outcomes. The usual spasticity is a very important uh, diagnostic feature, and orthopedists should always be conscious of the fact uh, that a spastic patient, otherwise undiagnosed, may have arginase 1 deficiency, and amino acids should be done. Healthcare providers can order a very simple laboratory test, the amino acid panel. The blood test will show an elevation of plasma arginine. The genetic test for mutation analysis and can be done in many laboratories throughout the country. Patients can be picked up on newborn screening by elevated arginine levels. Newborn screening has its limitations because it's not offered in every state. And because of this, uh, patients with arginase 1 deficiency uh, may be overlooked. Classic features of arginase 1 deficiency begin around two to four years of age and progress throughout childhood. Arginase 1 deficiency usually has very few symptoms in the first six or 12 months, although there could be episodes of irritability. They may develop seizures. They may uh, begin to slow down in their developmental progress. They may complain of stomach aches, uh, nausea, age two to five. Uh, may have increasing symptoms of spasticity, seizures, aversion to high protein foods, uh, and intellectual deterioration. Age five to 10 uh, have progression of their disorder. They may require a walker, spasticity becomes worse, and are clumsy uh, and walk more slowly. They begin to slow down in development. Uh, they don't attain as much speech as other kids their age, uh, maybe poor concentration, uh, forgetfulness, uh, not following commands as expected. Untreated high levels of arginine in childhood lead to debilitating complications into adulthood. So when Isaiah was about six months old, he had his first symptom of 
the condition, which was a gazing seizure. As he got older and started to, you know, be able to run and play, I did start to notice he had a lot of clumsiness in his um, running and going up the stairs or just even when he would walk, he would always be tripping a lot. Around three years old, I started to notice that Isaiah um, struggled with understanding patience, like it just didn't click in his mind. Isaiah gets developmental assessments every year and ever since he's been tested, he's always reached his milestones. And I do know that this is a progressive disease, so we're constantly, um, you know, concerned and watching that he's growing as he should. <laughs> You're gonna crush me. Oh, that was hard. While new therapies are in development to lower plasma arginine and treat arginase 1 deficiency, there are no approved medications that effectively and persistently reduce arginine levels. So ever since Isaiah was diagnosed, we do monitor him very closely with his arginine levels. The doctors did tell me um, often that Isaiah's arginine level was in range. Um, but it clicked on me that wasn't necessarily letting me know that he was cured. It was just that the condition was being controlled. Current therapy involves limitation on protein intake, supplementary amino acids to provide those things that are missing in the protein limitation. Finally, the use of what we call nitrogen scavengers or chemicals that divert ammonia from the urea cycle into a side pathway and will diminish the accumulation of arginine. An alternative uh, is a liver transplant, but liver transplants have complications of their own. Firstly, livers are difficult to come by. They're treated with strong medication and there can be rejection. The treatment of arginase 1 deficiency is very difficult for the patient and the family. Patients tend to resist the protein limitation. The children may suffer from uh, nausea and uh, lack of appetite. The uh, parents worry constantly about the diet. They spend a lot of time calculating the diet. And the dietary restrictions are only partially effective. They lower the plasma arginine, but don't reduce it to normal. And as a consequence, uh, symptoms and signs can progress. It's very difficult um, in managing your child's diet with such a restriction of protein and unrealistic, especially for a child. It's difficult every day and having to explain to Isaiah that no, you cannot have that, especially when everybody around him is having it. Uh, he gets very angry at times. That's where he loses control on his emotions on trying to adjust to that. It's very heartbreaking every day to feel that you're depriving your child from just having a normal life. We've made a lot of progress in the 45 years that I've been treating arginase deficiency. Current treatments fall short of the ideal and we're very much in need of something better. And with uh, newer treatments and more effective treatments, the prospects are even better that we can have a major impact and have normal outcomes in these patients. Through this process, it has brought um, our family a lot closer and we're all learning every day. We just make, try to make the best out of things and make life brighter with food and make life as normal as possible for Isaiah every day. For more information on Arginase 1 deficiency, visit arg1dinfo.com, aglia.com, or just go to our website, thebalancingact.com.